everyone. Hello, beautiful people. Thank you so much for joining me and us, I should say, because Liz is backstage, going to help me mod. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, and welcome to the very first live kit tutorial that I've ever done. So I'm super excited to be here. Super excited. Um, and if you guys notice, by the way, you see the keyboard, it's going away because this is a live tutorial. And what that means is I will not be reading chat. I will not be seeing comments. I will basically be focused on putting the kit together for you guys right with you. So, um, so Liz is going to do, um, you know, all the modding. She's going to be reading chat. Uh, she, know that she is not ignoring your questions. She's just going to try not to interrupt me. Okay. Cause you guys all know me. I'll get distracted and <laughs> forget about it. So she's going to be writing down any questions and whatever she can, she'll answer in chat, whatever I need to answer. She'll let me know. Um, but again, just, you know, work with us because this is a first, right? Um, for me, um, ever doing this. So we'll, we'll, we'll get the hang of it. We'll figure it out. Right, Liz? That's right. Uh, got this. <laughs> we got this guys. This is teamwork. All right. Well, welcome everybody. I, I do see some names. So, um, Sherilyn and Vanessa and Kelly and Barbara, uh, let's see our beautiful Liz is here. Angela woo -woo, in the house. Come on, move comments. It's stuck. Bev, April, Cheryl. Hey guys, the other Cheryl. Woohoo. Thank you so much, everyone. Hey, Amanda, for joining us. Um, oh, you're driving. Okay. So you're just listening. Awesome. Hey, Susan. All right. That's it. I promise. I'm looking away from chat. I'm not even going to look. We're going to get to crafting. So I hope you guys um, got your kits ready, of course. Uh, if you do not have it as of yet, that is okay. Like I had mentioned to you guys, you will always be able to come back and rewatch this video. Plus, there's going to be a bonus video, which is going to be the sped through version of this, right? Like a tutorial, an actual video tutorial. And that's going to be like, you know, maybe half an hour long. So you're even going to have a shorter version of this. So we got you covered is the bottom line. Um, but hopefully you guys do have your kits ready. You have some of the supplies that I had mentioned in the Facebook group. If you missed that, because I know we're all busy, um, you can go ahead and start gathering them now. You're going to need um, a crocodile, okay? Depending on if you're using magnets, you won't need this. But if you if you are not using magnets, um, then you'll need a crocodile or some kind of hole puncher, right? You're going to need some glues. You're going to need something that is nice and strong, adhesive like Fabri-Tac, hot glue gun art glitter glue, any of those, um, glossy accents. You can use also um, some white glue, just your regular, you know, spectrum art glue or um, whatever other white glue you might have, something for paper. You're going to need scissors, a pencil. Uh, you could use twine. The kit does come with seam binding, so you have options, right? Um, what else do we need? If you're going to do the sewn in signature, so I'm going to do I'm going to do the sewn in signature today because um, that's just, you know, what I figure most people would want. Uh, it's kind of what I had shown you guys when we uh, previewed the kit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for you guys tonight. Um, there are many options and we're going to go over those options uh, as we go along. But if you want to do the signature, you'll need needle and thread. You're going to need either a scoreboard or um, a ruler and something pokey, not pokey pokey, but something like a skewer stick or a bone folder or man, even those nail, you know, little cuticle um, wooden sticks, any of those will work um, as well. And then of course, you're going to need your kit. Now, we're going to go ahead and jump right in guys. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open, of course, your kit and you're going to take out your template. I have notes. I'm praying that um, the notes will help us stay on point. So I'm going to put them over here where I can read them. And that way I can stay on track for you guys. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out our template. That's what this is right here. Let me put this off to the side. We will need that right now. Let me put this off to the side as well as all of this as well. Okay. 
and we're going to go ahead and cut out our template. So the way that I do this is I typically cut around it like this. So I kind of free the pieces out. So I don't have to manipulate large pieces of paper when I cut, right? Oops, okay. So how is everyone today? I hope everyone's having a great Tuesday thus far. Hope you all got your dinners already. Well, most of us did in the East Coast, or at least prepped it ahead of time. So we can hang out. And see, I find it much easier to manipulate a smaller piece of paper this way than dealing with a whole page. And the reason why I did not pre-cut anything that of mine is because I wanted us to work in this real time, okay? So you're not trying to catch up and get all frazzled. We can all do it together. And if there are any questions out there, Liz, you can just shout them out as I'm going through just cutting this out. I put in the list of items they need besides the kit. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. For those of you who um, have, a, have a hard time with um, cutting, I will tell you that one of the greatest uh, tricks that I ever received is you never let the scissor close until you're finally ready to just, you know, cut off from the page. So never close all the way down. And then the other thing is when you're going around tight spaces, so you see I keep it open. I never finish closing. I open again and then I close. And then when I'm at the end, then I'm okay to snap off. Okay. But what I was saying is when I'm going around corners, you don't want to just focus on moving one or the other. You want to move both hands, the paper and the scissor simultaneously. That will actually help you with fussy cutting. I know some people struggle with it and they say that I'm really bad at it. And I found that the trick to fussy cutting um, is to basically move both hands together at the same time to get into those really tight, tight little spaces. And you want to try and close, you know, to cut as close to the lines that I provided for you as possible, okay? Now, when you're cutting this piece, you might actually look at this and go, well, that's kind of wonky. It's kind of coming in, right? It's kind of a little bit angled. It's not perfectly straight. It's meant to be that way, guys. So, so make sure that when you're cutting it, you cut it that way as well. Don't try to correct the lines, but cut right on the lines. For these, I cut this way. I cut the bigger straight lines out. And then I do come in with detail scissors to get those, these little two squares right there, okay? And if anybody out there, if I'm going too fast, let me know, okay? but I'm trying to do this in real time for you guys so we can all do it together. And you might need some of these pieces tonight. You might not need them all. My suggestion is like I did here, let me show you. Mm -hmm. I grabbed a um, gallon size Ziploc bag and I put them in there. And then that way I have all of my pieces together and I know from here on out, these four pieces are going to be what I'm going to need to do this kit over and over again, as many times as I want, as many different ways as I want. So, and the rest is all scrap, so you can throw that out. Okay. So we have cut out our template. The next thing we're going to do is you will notice that there are three little dots, three markings, one in the pocket, one on the flap, and one on this bottom piece. We are going to go ahead and actually punch out all the holes on this template, okay? So three holes. Why are you out instead of in? Oh, I can see Madison was playing with it. It's missing a peg. All right. Oh, come on. 
Oh, hang on. There we go. Now it's all the way in. All right. And if you notice the measurement, if you have a crocodile, you notice that the crocodile reaches perfectly well. And I did that on purpose because I know most of us do have crocodiles, and I wanted to be able to use the tool that we have, right? Um, Maddie, I don't have this crocodile, so I don't know the answer because my crocodile is the big one. Uh huh. April is asking what size hole? Is um, this two sizes? There are two sizes. If you're going to be using the eyelets that were included in your kit, you're going to need the 3 16th. In other words, the big one or the bigger of the two. They are that one. This one on this side is smaller. And that size is the 1 8th, not the 1 8th. Okay. So not this one. Go for the bigger one, the 3 16th. Good question. Thank you. Good question. Okay. And of course, that depends. Um, later on, we're going to talk about an extra bonus. And we'll talk about how you can potentially use smaller brads and why you would want to use smaller brads. So don't let me forget that. I will forget, Liz, <laughs> to mention the, the, oh, the bonus yes. Yes, idea for, for the whole kit. Okay. So we've cut out our template. We've punched out our holes, right? Now we need to select um, your decorative paper. Now, in your case, I included a paper line with your kit, right? Which was the Blue Fern Paisley and Vine, this collection right here. Okay. And that's the one that I used to make all the uh, samples that I showed you guys for the kit. So you'll have all of these sheets in there. One thing, if you've never owned Blue Fern, well, the first thing you probably notice when you take out your paper is, holy macro, other two or three sheets stuck together. <laughs> because Blue Fern is very, very thick paper. And I specifically chose that for that reason, because we need very strong, sturdy paper for this, for this project, okay? So um, let's look at these sheets here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start thinking about what do we want our clutch to look like. So let me go get some samples. And you'll see what I mean by that. So obviously, this is going to be my flap, right, which is going to fold as such. Do I want this part to be on the flap? Then I need to be tracing here, right? So start thinking about your positioning. Do you want this blue flower to be maybe on a corner or on the flap, right? See what I'm doing? I'm kind of just playing around with my template to see in my mind, I, how is this going to play out? If I cut this right here, all of this is going to be on the one side here of the clutch. And then this will be here on the closing flap. That could be pretty cool, right? But look around. Maybe you want it to be green on the outside and those flowers on the inside could be. Maybe you want it to have the mandalas, such as this one. I mean, this paper is gorgeous, so you can't really go wrong. See, this one's got the mandalas on the outside and then obviously that green paper on the inside. So just take a few minutes. Look at your papers. Oh, this is pretty, right? This is this one right here. So pretty. Right? And you see how it looks like stamping around the edges? So that's an option. And then the green will be on the inside. We could do that. We could do, hmm, let's see, the brown one. Let me get to that one. Oh, that's cute, too. Look at the Harlequin. That would be fun. Stripes are always fun, yes. <clears throat> or ooh, what about the birdies, right? I think I used that one somewhere. What did I do with the birdies? No, I don't think I used the birdies. But I did use this brown one. That one is right here, right? So take a look at your collection. Decide what it is that you want to do which ones you like, which ones you prefer. They all coordinate because they're all part of the same collection. So if you notice, I use some of this here and on the inside. 
and then to make the pockets coordinate with it, I simply use the reverse, right? So can't go wrong. It's kind of, you know, <laughs> it's kind of um, kind of a, a very easy uh, choice here. I think I'm going to do the brown one again. I really like that brown dark color. Go figure, right? Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. So what we're going to do next is we're going to select the decorative paper. Uh, if you don't want to use the collection that was included, that's fine. Just make sure it's very thick paper like blue fern, right? And then using a pencil, where is our pencil? Here it is. We are going to lightly trace around um, the, actually, you know what? I better go light. I just realized for camera purposes, for you guys to see my markings, I need to go light. What is the lightest thing I can find? Probably this side, right? Mm -hmm. Or this one. The birdie one is light too. The birdie one's light too. All right, Liz, you pick for us. Which one do you think? Where's my birdie? The one that looks like the chicken wire. You like what? The one that looks like the chicken wire behind the birdies. Chicken wire. Okay, that one. Okay. So do we want the chicken wire on the outside or on the inside? Inside inside okay so then the birdie on the outside yes okay we can do that okay so all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna trace around my template and you guys are gonna do the same now before you lift this template don't lift it so go around the sides like i am right around the perimeter don't lift off yet Keep it steady because we're going to do something else before we lift off. We're going to do a couple of things. The first one is going to be to mark our, oops, let me move up. Sorry, guys. To mark our holes. So we're going to mark here in the middle. We're going to mark here in the middle. We're still not done. We're going to come here and we're going to mark where this line is. I'll bring it up in a second where this other line is as well, this one on top as well, the two lines, and then the two on the left-hand side. So you're basically going to put the markings, let me bring it up, try and keep it together. I traced around the edge, you see that now, right? Where I traced, maybe I should have done it in pen. But then I also did the dots, right, in the middle. It's and not very visible on YouTube. It's not? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, let me do it in marker then. So mine, you guys are going to have to just forgive me. Mine's going to have some marker lines on it, but it'll probably be best for showing. Okay. Let me grab a or a pen. Let's try a pen. And this is good because it gives everybody else time to catch up too. So. And Angela wanted me to let you know she had to leave. Oh, okay. No worries. I hope she's okay. Yeah, she didn't say. Okay. All right. So once again, let me bring it up and see if that's any better. Oops, oops, oops. Okay. So I went around. Is that better now? Let me wait till it comes up on YouTube. And I traced with the pen. Much better. And then I did the dot, right? The dot in the middle and the other dot in the middle. And then I marked here where these two lines were, these two lines, and then also on the other side, okay? All right, now that that's done, I can lift off. All right, now, before we cut out anything, and that's why I say please don't get ahead of me, right? We are going to use our um, ruler and our stylus to basically score our lines. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler and you're going to line up these two marks that you did right there on the left and on the right. And then you're going to run your pointy tool, whatever that may be, on that line, that line, that line, and that line. Okay? So I'm going to stand up so I can see. 
Hopefully I don't put my big head in the camera. <laughs> I'm trying to line it up and I'm trying to stay in frame. So all I'm doing is scoring. And score. Let me move back in frame. Oh, it's so hard to see over the ruler when it's this far off my desk. Score and score. Okay, hopefully everybody's with me. If you, I've lost you somewhere, holler, okay? All right. So now I know you can't see those lines, but they're there. They're scored, okay? There, you can see them. See them? They are scored. You see them right there. All right. Huh? Pretty big line. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're visible. All right. Now, now we can go ahead and cut this, this baby out. All right. Did the same thing as before. I cut it into a more manageable size. When I get here to this turn, you're gonna see me basically work the scissor and the page together. Here, let me show you what I mean. And that's just a little tip for being able to have some really good fussy cut angles. So once I get here, watch, I'm gonna turn both my hands and the page and follow that line, see that? One smooth go. I'm going to do it again once I get here. Take your time, though. We are not in a rush. And again, if you mess up, it's not a big deal because you have the template. You can do this again and again and again. Okay, this is trash. And you see how perfect it fits on a 12 by 12. All that was left on that other side is this piece. And guess what? That's not trash either. So save it because we're going to use it possibly for those. Okay, we've got this far. Now you can actually take your paper and score it right where you had out. I'm sorry, bend it right at the score lines that you had made. If you have a bone folder, great. If not, the back of a scissor or a popsicle stick will work, right? We're going to bend at the second line. See, so easy because everything has been done for you guys. It's all pre-measured, pre-done. All right. So now we've got that. Look how simple that was. Now we're going to come down here. We've got the other two lines, right, that we had made. Focus, focus. Okay, come on. Right there. Oh, it's kind of hard to see. Sorry, guys. But we, we know they're there. We're going to bend and crease. We're going to bend and crease. And again, we're going to come back with our bone folder, popsicle stick, whatever works for you guys. Any questions thus far, Liz? No. All right. Wow. Man, you guys are, you guys are easy peasy. All right, and there we have the skeleton done for our clutch. As simple as that, guys. All right, let me make sure we're on track here, that I didn't skip any steps. Let me see, let me see. Okay, yeah, perfect. So now that we've done that, now we're going to stop and think about how we want this to look. This is the base, no matter what look you're going to go for. Whether you're going to go for just the clutch, which is just the box, right? Clutch wallet, okay? Looks, this is gonna be the base. If you're going to go with the accordion, it is still the same base, okay? If you're going to do the, where's my journal? Did I lose it? Didn't I have it like not long ago? Oh, Lordy, guys, hang on. <laughs> Just had it. Oh, there they are. If you're going to go with the journal, which is what we're gonna be doing today, this one right here, it's still the same base. Or if you're going to do the notepad, which is this look, right? It is still the same base. So the base is always the key to everything that we're going to be working with today. All right, put these aside. 
but you guys decide. In, in our case, I'm going to go ahead and do this one right here. So I know um, a couple of things. How many pockets do I want is my first question. Do I want this many pockets? This one's got one, two, three, and I believe four pockets. You might not want four. You might want just the front one. And maybe you've got other plans for stuff here. Maybe you want to do a flip or a tuck or another little you know, pocket going this way or I don't know, maybe two pads. It's up to you. Um, and the same thing back here. So now you need to decide what do you want to do? Mini journal, accordion, wallet, the prong paper fastener notepad, um, a clipped paper pad, um, and how many pockets do you want all together, okay? If you're going to do the mini journal, okay, or the prong fastener, or the notepad, or the clip paper pad, we're going to first trace out the number of pockets that we want, and then we're going to need a spine reinforcer. By the way, this little piece of straight line paper is your spine reinforcer. So you'll only need these two pieces if you're making this, plus, I'm sorry, plus the pocket. Okay, you will not need this piece. The only time you're going to use this piece is if you are making the clutch, meaning you need to close off these two walls here on the side to make it look like, like a box, like this. That's what this piece is right here. This piece right here is this. Okay, well, this way actually. But we are not making that today. If you do want to make that, go for it. It's super simple. You're doing the same thing. You're going to need two of these, one for the left, one for the right. And you're going to need to score, obviously, I'm sorry, to crease and score here so you can bend those, right? And then they'll go in and get glued on the inside as in there, as you can see right there. And the video that I'm going to be putting out later is going to have an explanation on this too. But today we're not going to do that. You know, it's pretty simple. If you do want to do it, by all means, go for it. Just trace two of these. Use your ruler to trade um, to score them and then fold. Okay. All right. So for this video, though, for today, I'm not going to be using this piece. I'm going to put that aside. I'm only going to need these three pieces. We've already done this, so I can put that aside. Now we're moving on to these. So remember how I told you this little piece doesn't go to waste? There's my spine, if I so want it to be, right? So if I want my spine in here to blend like this one does, see, it kind of blends in. It looks like it's part of the same, you know, book. You could. If you want to create contrast, you can do that too. You can pick a paper that's contrasting. So instead of it going like this and kind of seamy, you know, like a seam kind of no seam, what do I want to say, continuous uh, picture. If you want to choose, yeah, right? I'm like, words, words, those things. <laughs> um, if you wanted to contrast, use this, use this, use, I don't know, the brown one, right? Or the stripes. So you pick how you want it to look. I'm going to keep it uniform. Maybe I shouldn't because it would probably jump out more on camera if I do it, if I do a contrast, wouldn't it? I agree. I agree, let's do that. I agree with you, Liz. I agree that you agree. I like it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's pick something really contrasting. Let's go with the brown, because can't miss that, right? So all I'm going to do for my spine, again, this is going to be my hidden spine or spine reinforcer, which is going to go in there in that gusset, okay, or gutter, however you want to call it, is I'm just going to cut one of these pieces. That's all. So I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to trace it on this side so it's more visible for you guys. So everyone, go ahead and trace this puppy right here. And guys, let me know if um, you need for me to slow down to explain anything. If anyone's stuck or lost, if you have questions, 
All right, and again, I'm cutting the piece smaller so it's more manageable. My scissor is full of glue. I just noticed that. Shame, huh? And I'm, well, I know why I'm always having to sharpen my scissors. Hello. Because I cut wet glue. Okay. All right. Now, now you can see how this is going to jump out at us, right? This is going to be my spine or hidden reinforcer right there on the inside. I need one of those. Now, that's done. Let's put that all aside. Now let's focus on pockets. Here comes the fun part. How many pockets would you like, right? One, two, three, four. And how do you want them to look? Do we want to use the exact same paper so that it all blends? You might. I won't because I want it to pop out for you guys. So I guess I'm going to, let's see. Let's see, let's see. That will blend in. That will pop out. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to make my pockets, right, out of a darker paper so that it really jumps out for you guys on camera and you can see the difference. I think I'm going to go with the exact same idea because I love pockets, right? I'm going to go one, two, three, four pockets. Do you have to do that? Of course not, right? You guys can create um, little side pockets. You might even want to cut like a piece on a corner, like, oopsie, like such. I mean, just crudely, randomly showing you that you could actually do something along these lines, right? And then create a little tuck that way. Whatever you guys would like. Again, for the sake of the video, the first one we're going to do together is going to be pretty standard, and then you guys can take it from there. Because now, now that you have the template, sky's the limit, guys. Go for it. All right, I'm going to trace myself four pockets. So that's the next step, tracing pockets. Go pocket crazy, guys. And when you trace before you lift, don't forget to mark your hole, right? So right in the middle, mark. I'll bring it up and show you. So I've traced around my pocket, and right in the middle, I've put a dot of that hole. Okay? I'm going to do that three more times. And again, you guys want to think about placement. Is there maybe a flower that you like in the center of the pocket? Um, is there, you know, any other features in the paper that you like? I'm just crudely kind of going for it, guys, without much thought, just so you guys can just see how we put this together real quick. All right, I'm going to do one more. So that's one, two, three, and this will be my fourth. And this is why I don't recommend ever using a pen because I'm getting ink on my fingers, which then, of course, is smearing onto my paper. But maybe we're going for a grungy look, right? I'm just using the pen for the sake of the camera, guys. But I don't recommend using pens. So one, two, three. Four. Four pockets. Super fast, huh? Again, I'm going to cut it to a more manageable size. I still have all this left. Think about how many boxes you can make, you know, because you could basically get one out of a 12 by 12 piece of paper, by the way. So you could do five, six of them with just the paper that was included. You know what I was thinking, Liz? Yes. I mean, no. <laughs> you know that um, new uh, Blue Fern Fairy line? Oh, that was so beautiful. I, I almost pulled it out to do it um, because I think the box, it's either the box from the boxes from Blue Fern arrived today or maybe, 
I think they might be coming in tomorrow. But I thought about it and I thought, ooh, I should do one with the fairy paper. And then I thought, that's not fair, Maddie. That's not nice. Not everyone's got their paper. No, but it would be a nice inspiration for them to. I'm sure this is not going to be the only set they make. Oh, no. I'm sure we will be making many. Mm -hmm. and I really like these as ephemera holders. Yeah, aren't those cool? Because you can stack them like little stack them like little books as a library too. Definitely. And then you label them like, you know, people or food or whatever, you know, birds. And then instead of having this offers as little journals or, you know, with the paper that people can throw in their purse. Mm -hmm. and a perfect, perfect gift. But yeah, I like the ephemera idea, like the playing card idea, because playing card decks fit in here beautifully. And instead of having to, you know, when you're looking for a flower or even like the German scrap, when you're looking for a flower, you're like, oh, I know this needs a flower. You can just pull that out and be like, flower it is. I got it all in one box. So it's a great way to get organized and make it look cute. Any questions out there? Nothing yet. Wow, really, guys? Mm -hmm. Is it because you're, are you guys crafting along with me? Is it pretty simple? If there's questions that you have of like um, anything that you're not sure of placement, please ask. Any other questions, I'm writing them down and holding them till at the end. But I don't have, I haven't even written any because there haven't been any. <laughs> wow, what? Really, guys? Okay, well, you guys let me know. I mean, hopefully that's a good thing. That means you're following along, right? Or maybe it's a bad thing, which means you're completely lost and gave up. <laughs> Please don't say that is so, because I want you guys to craft with me. Okay. So I like to watch and then do it later on, too. So That's true, too. Put it together later. Just like that, I got my four pockets. I've got my holes. Now, if you are doing the magnetic closure, you don't really need the holes, but can I just tell you guys a trick? Because I learned this, you know, after doing a couple of them, I always punch my holes. And I tell you why, because they act as my guide for me to line up my uh, pockets. Oh, oh, wait, wait, don't body punch anything <laughs> before I almost forget. Oh, okay. Here is a really good tip. Think about which side because if you go just crazy and start punching your holes okay here's what i mean you see if i punch this hole here and i want this pocket to be here great but what happens if i punch this pocket this this hole here and really i wanted this pocket to look this way now my holes on the wrong side got it so yes stop and first look if you need to if you realize whoa that's on the wrong side no worries Grab your template again, grab your pen, remark your hole now on the right side, okay? The other one is on the inside, so nobody will ever see it anyway. And now I can punch this one, okay? And I know that that's going to line up with this hole right here, right? So, oops, we forgot to punch our holes. Let's punch our holes. This says she is far behind. Who is? Kim Stevenson, thinking about giving up. No, don't give up. All right. Tell us where you're stuck, Kim. Can mm -hmm. I help you with anything, hon? That's what I asked her. I said, where is she at? So that. Yeah. Which step are you on, honey? So now you see, my holes are going to help me to align my pocket. Just perfect. So once again, now I'm going to think. My next pocket is going to go here. I don't want that side, not for the video purposes. I want this side. So once again, see? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. This side doesn't have a pocket, doesn't have a hole. So it doesn't matter. That one's fine. The inside is what matters. So once again, I'm going to put my pocket here. And I'm going to say, uh-uh, I need it to be on this side. So I'm going to bring my template back over and realign again. So it's just a matter of choosing which side you want to face out and and making note of that before you punch out your holes. Now I got my hole in the right place. I'm gonna punch that out and that's gonna go there. So now I've got all three of these holes now are going to line up perfectly. 
thanks to the template, okay? This one here does not need a hole, and this one here does not need a hole, so it doesn't matter, okay? All right, let me take a pause. Who is where, and does anybody need help? Do she I need help? She's, um, no, I'm not stuck. I'm old, so I'm slow cutting out the dumb pocket. <laughs> no worries. I can sit here for a couple of minutes. Cut your pockets. Relax. It's not a race. All right. I'm just going to let you guys catch up with the pockets. Again, just remember before, like they always say, right? Measure twice, cut once. Same thing. Grab your stuff. Look at it. Decide. When I was doing this one, did I want this side or did I want whatever was on the other side of this, right? And did I want this writing here or did I want this writing there? I mean, just play with them. And when you know for a fact which ones you want where, um, if it's something complicated, this pattern is not complicated because it's pretty much can go any which way. Um, I, it didn't matter to me. But if I'm doing something that's got a pattern that does matter, like writing or an image, and I want the girl face to be up here, or maybe I want it to be facing this way, then you have to stop and think, place it, and then even label it. When you guys watch the video that I did, one of the notes that I gave, I will give you on there, um, one of the hints is I label my pockets. So on the inside of this one, I know this is number one. I'll write one. See, nobody can see it. It's on the inside. Then I know that this is going to be number two. So on the inside, I write two. And then these don't matter, so I can be three and four. Now I know where these pockets go. So when I distress and move stuff around in my desk, I don't get flustered with thinking, oh no, was this the pocket for the front or the back? You know, I won't get that frustration because they're labeled, they're numbered, okay? Um, there's a question. Cheryl, sure. Cheryl G is asking, on the main piece, what did you cut off? You didn't cut anything off the main piece. I Nothing, honey. I cut it out of, you know, this is the, the template shape, right? It looks just like the template. All I did was I punched the holes. And, of course, I used the score lines, right, to score the lines here. That's all. But, no, no, we didn't cut anything off. Maybe you meant, maybe you meant the sidewalls. All the pieces, yeah. The other yep. pieces, maybe. So maybe you're talking about this piece right here. Is this it? Yes, Sharon. There are two pockets with holes, one for the back and one for the front. Right. So when you close your clutch, okay, mm -hmm. We're gonna call this the front flap because it is the flap. It's what flaps on, right? You're gonna have a pocket, if you want, a pocket here, and if you want, a pocket here. Right. Okay? Those are the ones that you need to think about where you want the holes to be. The other ones do not require holes, so it doesn't matter. Yvonne said earlier that, um, Maddie, you are making the project look very simple and doable. Great tutorial. Oh, thank saying, you. I love your process. It's almost foolproof. Thank you. Yes. And, thank you. And that's what I was sharing with you guys. I said, I want you guys to just get to having the fun of creating, right? And again, I've done it a couple of times, guys. Once you do it once, You'll do it the second one that much faster. And then by the third and fourth, you're going to be flying. You're going to be like, oh, seriously, I can do this while I'm watching TV. It and really this, this video is going to be up. So if you feel flustered right now and you just want to take a break, mm -hmm. you can always come back to it and stop it as you go along. Exactly. All right. And Cheryl G said, okay, thank you. I was interrupted at that point. Oh, no worries. Nothing. Yep. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you for asking the questions. Okay, so now we're going to stop and think about our closure, right? If you were doing, there are many different closures that you can do, by the way, right? I shared with you the magnet one where we're just going to glue magnets. That one's super simple, so I'm not going to bother with that one. The tuck one, which is, did I tuck this one? Which is that I just tuck the fabric underneath the pocket and use Fabri-Tac to glue it. Again, Pretty self-explanatory, very simple. 
Um, I think probably the most intricate one is going to be the button closure, which is this one. And again, it's not intricate, guys. Wait, that was the wrong word to use. It, they're all super simple, but the one that might be a little bit, you know, we might want to do together is this one. So that's what I'm going to do today. Okay. We're going to do this one together. Okay. So, and that's how we're going to proceed. So we're going to think about the fact that in this case, we said, okay, in our mind, we're going to be using the um, button closure for that. In your kit are buttons. But again, you could use any button you like. Does it have to be a flat one? No, um, preferably, but you have such a large gusset. See how thick that is? In spine that you could possibly use something you know with a bling you could um, but it does have to be a two hole one I gave you some flat wooden ones because they go so cute with the paper line so we're gonna use one of those today okay so let me read my notes make sure I'm not forgetting anything okay All right, we're also gonna talk about the fact of the hidden signature. Now, I think most people are familiar with a hidden signature. Um, if you're not, well, you're in luck because I'm gonna do one together with you guys here today. It is super simple. It is my favorite method of doing signatures just because I think it looks very clean. Do I like um, sometimes when the strings are on the outside? Yeah, sure, it's kind of cool, um, but I like the cleanliness of having, you know, my journals not snag on anything. So I, I prefer to do the hidden signatures. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay. It's going to be super simple. So once we've made the commitment to decide this is going to be my closure and yes, I am doing a journal. We are going to need these two other pieces as well. Let me move this off the table so I don't confuse you. Oh, I'm sorry. We are going to need the eyelids. Okay. So you're going to take out two of the eyelets that were included in the kit. Now, when you look at the kit, you're going to see not only the eyelet pieces, but you're going to see the rings as well, the flat rings, these. Do you have to use these? Not at all. They are meant to just basically give them a more finished look but you don't need them. So if you feel comfortable using them and you prefer them, use them. If you don't, and it doesn't matter to you, don't. Um, again, that's just a preference. I put them in there just you know, to give you guys extra stuff, but it's totally up to the user whether they want to or not. Okay, so we made a commitment. I am not going to be using, I gave you also a plenty of seam binding probably for more than two journals. I'm not gonna use mine, so I'm gonna put mine off to the side because I don't need them. Instead, I'm going to be using twine. And that's why I listed that as one of your optional um, tools. If you have some twine, some string, and you want to use it or other like thin, um, maybe fibers, great. Um, up to you. Again, guys, the possibilities are forever endless, right? So now I know that I'm going to need these tools right here. Some twine, a button, and some eyelids and that's probably what you want to gather as well if you want to follow along with what i am doing okay all right we have made a commitment <laughs> we are ready so now what we're going to do is we're going to distress and again distressing is also optional some people don't like distressing their stuff i do so i'm gonna distress and i think actually i'm gonna go with black soot mm -hmm. So, well, you know what I was thinking is because I have those, you know, those pen oh, marks that I did for you guys. <laughs> so I'm going to try and hide them now. <laughs> so there's another tip. If you use the pen or a marker and you are like, ooh, I can see those pen marks. Guess what? Get some black soot. Problem solved. So if you're not distressing, this is your opportunity to catch up, right? All right, everybody good out there? You guys all following along? And for those of you who are still cutting, again, plenty of time to catch up. 
I also like to um, to do my um, edges. Okay. Again, totally optional. And you don't have to have the stress inks. Whatever ink you have will work. So if you have like little ink pads or whatever you have in your arsenal. And while I distress list, because this is going to take a second, yes. would you mind sharing with the folks um, the uh, swap with the uh, tag? Oh, the information? Yeah. Okay. In my group. We will be doing a, uh, I extended the date actually till Friday because we're going live on Thursday to work on the tags and I'm doing a swap. It's, um, they're going to be seven tags and they're going to be specific colors that we will share Thursday and they're tags with pockets. Each tag is going to have a main color. You can use other colors, but you have to remember to use the main color for each one. And um, what I do in my swaps, I started doing, and I feel that this is the best way so that I know no one gets cheated out of a swap, is everyone sends me the pictures of their completed projects. And those pictures that I get from only the ones that send me pictures will get a partner. You won't know who you will be getting from, but you will only know who you're sending to, if that makes sense. Yeah. So sign up is until Friday. And I hope you all enjoy um, join because I think it's going to be fun. And I, I to choose colors, right, um, Maddie? That I do. I love it. <laughs> colors that we don't all use or some may be afraid of using. So it's and, challenging, but it's not like scary ch challenging. Right. There is no pink and there's not even red. <laughs> in I know. Colors. So See? I hope you all consider joining. Red would have been challenging for me, but that's awesome though. Because, yeah. you know, I like the fact that sometimes we have things in our arsenal that we're not using. Oh, see, I'm I'm actually distressing the wrong side, guys. Hello, it's this side we're working with. So yeah, pay attention to that too. <laughs> but yes, so on Thursday we're gonna go live, and we're gonna actually make um the tags, some of the tags, um, you know, live. So if you guys want to get some ideas, maybe do some Pinterest, or if you have some ideas in your head of, oh, cool, a pocket tag, I would do something like this. Feel free to gather your supplies and join us on Thursday and craft along. But if not, yeah, definitely come and check it out and sign up. Because I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, no, crazy colors, Liz. Wait, I thought it was one tag. No, it's going to be seven tags. I like to make my swaps are about trying to get people out of their comfort zone. You know, and, and I've done that with other swaps. And ladies have discovered that they like things that, that um, they've never done before and they're actually good at. And this is an easy, this is an easy swap. It's not, I don't think it's gonna be too difficult. The challenge is the colors. Right. Well, and, and that's cool because that is a challenge and it's supposed to be. I mean, we're always doing the same thing and the same thing. I mean, that's things to do for ourselves, but why not challenge ourselves too so we can grow, right? Yes. And I know you like your comfort zone, but this is where Liz is this is my strength is, you know, getting people to come out of their comfort zone. And I really, sorry, Liz, can't participate. If it ain't pink, it ain't happening. Oh, that's you gotta do happen. this, please. I'm going to tell you all one color, one color so that I know a lot of us love this color and a lot of us don't love it because it's so dark. And the one of the colors is black. Oh, I'm using black. So we can do this. Come on. This is, it's going to, um, Friday is the last day of sign up. I give you a month to work on your projects because I do what I did before and I have fallen out of that process, but I have had a lot of stuff going on and I'm going to be putting swaps every two weeks like I have in my group and they will last a month. Exactly. Look, Barbara, you got me out of my comfort zone with the altered bottle. Yes, there I did. You go. And oh. it, 
it's, oh, it's, I was just going to say, guys, if you're distressing, sorry to interrupt. No, it's okay. Um, don't forget this little piece, right? You're distressing your pockets. You're distressing your, your main piece, but don't forget your, um, your little gusset thing as well. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Oh, Yvonne, you should get your, your Facebook and try what? to join. It would be so great. I'm it, not going with anything. Please, no tear. Okay. It's not one of the colors, but we'll discuss this more in detail on Thursday. Oh, yeah. We're going to work for a while on Thursday. All righty, guys. So hopefully everyone has caught up, right? We are good. We have um, distressed all of our stuff. The next thing that we're going to be doing is um, we could do one of two things. We can glue our pockets down now, technically. You know what? Let's do that. Let's do that. And then that way we can work um, with our papers, okay? And if anybody, by the way, gets this far, then the rest is totally easy peasy because now it's up to you what you want to put in it. Okay. So... Once again, these are going to line up for me so nicely. See, I can't mess it up because now I know that the hole, see the hole right there? It doesn't go there at all. There's no hole there. The hole's over here. So I know this has got to be my inside, but I had already numbered it anyway as number two. So see, no matter what, I got it all figured out. Okay. So now I know that these are all lined up and all I need to do is to hear them. So let's go ahead and glue down our pockets. And this is where I mentioned you can either use um, school glue, you can use your Fabri-Tac, your art glitter glue. Um, luckily, blue fern is a very, um, what word I want to use? Um, sturdy paper line? Oh, wait, hang on, guys. Hold on one second. Thank you for letting me share the information. Actually. Oh, of course. We're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say... Um, one of the things that we want to do is we want to think about our eyelet. I'm, I almost got ahead of myself. We can go ahead and insert this one now. So let me, for those of you who are working on a phone, get up close. So we're going to put our eyelet in, right? You saw me pop it in. Again, the ring is optional. Whoops, did I get rid of my rings already? <laughs> Where'd they go? Oh, no. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing I gave you guys some extras because I lost mine already. What? Where did my rings go, guys? Who saw my rings? Oh, there they are. Hello. Oh, Maddie. Oh, I tell you, girl, it can't take me anywhere. <laughs> if you want to insert your rings, you can. You do so by just placing them down like that, right? Like so. You're going to grab your crocodile tool. We're going to insert and we're going to close. Oh, my hands hurt, people. Hang on. Ah, hold up, everybody. My hands hurt. You know what? I'm going to do it without the ring because I don't want to struggle with it upside down. I'm going to do it this way. See if it's better for my hands. I love the rain, but this rain is not helping my hands at all. All right, so there's my eyelet. It's in. We're going to grab the next one on this side. Is my eyelet in? Yeah, it's in. Okay. Grab the next one. Here's one thing for the thought. Where am I? Where's my pocket? I got to find the right pocket. Not that one, not that one. This one and this one. Okay. This is the pocket that's going to go in here. The eyelet is definitely going to go through that front pocket. Again, this is the front, right? This is the flap. This is the front. Eyelet's going to go through this one no matter what. You have a choice. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I don't want you guys to worry later on and think, come on. Oh, my finger, my thumb. Oh, there it goes. I don't want you guys to think think and worry and be like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I put the eyelid in and then I didn't put this pocket in. It doesn't really matter if you want to do them both together, all three at the same time, meaning through this pocket, this paper, and this pocket, you can. If the eyelid ends up underneath the pocket, you can. So, okay. So nobody, nobody worry, nobody freak out. All right. Taking this back out. Now we're going to glue those pockets. So if you've done your, your eyelid on the outside, right, 
we're going to take and now glue. That's a little too much glue. I went glue happy. Hang on. There we go. Going to grab using the hole. We're going to line up our pocket and make sure that it's nice and straight. And again, because it's wet glue, I have some give so I can decide if I need to move it. But that looks pretty straight to me. So I'm going to press down on that. All right, give it a second. If anybody is getting left behind, let me know, okay? But we, if you wanted to distress, you had plenty of time. If you need more time, no worries. After you're done distressing, all you're doing is inserting that, the top eyelid, right? The one on the flap. We've now glued the front pocket. We're now gonna flip to the inside and we're going to glue the next pocket. Again, using the hole to line it up. Oh, look at that. Boom. Perfect, right? So the holes, and that's why I told you, I even if it's with magnets, I punch the holes because I want to use my holes to help me line up my pockets that much easier. And you see how it all just kind of fits like a glove thanks to the template, right? It all lines up for you. Super simple. Again, lined up with the hole. There's the hole. And now I can maybe shift it a little bit on this corner. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. All right, same thing. Press it down. So how are you guys liking it so far? Do you like this idea? Would you rather it be in a private setting? Um, or do you like the idea of just being able to hang out? And how many of you out there have do not have kits and are still watching because you're thinking, hmm, maybe I can give this a go on my own? Well, um, Donna Wright was saying she wished she had ordered the kit, but she left, so she might reach out to you for a kit. Oh, yeah. And if anybody's out there and you do not have one and you want one after you watch this or the other video and you're like, man, I should have gotten one. That's pretty cool. And I love the fact that it all just comes together you know, so easily reach out. I got you. I can if do you it. want a kit so you can put, I want kit and I can put your name down and I can give uh, Maddie the list. Also. Yeah, there you go. Okay, pockets okay. lined up. I'm going to pop this back out because I didn't show you. Um, there was the one question Carol yes, Dyer is asking. Uh -huh. Maddie, could you sew the outside pockets on? Yes, actually I did that. Um, on one of them I did. Which one? Here you go. See? I ran it through the machine. All wonky. Love it, right? So I did actually sew. I think just the front one. But yes, you could totally sew on your pockets. Good question and good suggestion. All right. So my pockets and your pockets are not glued down, right? We put glue on three sides, right? Not four because we left it open as a pocket. We are now going to take that second eyelet, and we're gonna put it in the hole through all three pockets. Again, if you have forgotten, and on your next one that you're doing, you get ahead of yourself, don't freak out, it's okay. It's all gonna get hidden by the button. We're gonna grab our crocodile, oh, upside down, and we're gonna press. Ooh, come on, hands. Woo, okay, we get it, we got it, all right. As simple as that, we have now, because of the template, it all flows seamlessly. It has all been, right? It's all matchy-matchy, as you can see. I can see all the way through. Hang on, let me put my fingernail in there so you guys can see my fingernail. Or something, maybe something white. Oh, come on, Maddie, there. See? Come Let's on. Let me know if you want me to put you on the list for the kit. It's as simple as that. They're all lined up now. Okay, now that's done. Whoops. Now we can go ahead and do our button next, or we can continue on with the pockets. Let's do our button. Why don't we? Right? Let's get it out of the way. All right, we're going to need some twine. Do I want this or do I want yellow? Mm, no, I want yellow. Do I want yellow? Hmm. 
Maybe I want teal. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> like, I don't know because I had this for the other paper. I was going to do a different collection, and then I remember that I should probably do what was included in the kit. I think the teal would look nicer. All right, let me go get a teal. I'll be right back. Now, I have this teal. But mind you, this teal's kind of light and bright, but we can fix that because we have oxide inks. So yeah, we're gonna grunge that up, okay? You're gonna figure out how you would like for this to, I always give it extra because I rather have more and be able to cut away. I think I had it initially said 34 inches, okay? So 34 inches, let me do what I had suggested and see how well that works. And I'll try it for you guys and tell you if that's about right. So that's 34 inches of twine. I'm going to fold it in half. And if that was there, that's more than plenty to wrap, wrap around a couple of times that way or this way, right? And again, up to you guys how many times you want to wrap it around, okay? but that's gonna work just fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my button and we're gonna feed this through the holes of the button. Oh, wait, before I do that, I was mentioning to you guys that I think this is way too light. I want it a little bit more grungy-like. So hang on, let me get my glue. I agree that grungy would be better. Right? So. <laughs> All I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my ink, and yes, as crudely as this, I'm just going to run it right through with my fingers. Just pressing it down, holding it, squishing it around. I could spray it on a mat and then run it that way, but eh, this is easy. Easy peasy. And now you can see the color is completely changing. It is not that bright Here's the original. Hopefully, come on. Okay. How about if I put them side by side this way? Focus. Focus. You see how that one's grungy and brownish and yellowish versus the stark white? Contrast it. It's grungified. And that's what I'm going for. And I can continue to do that until I'm happy with the color. Let's see how it looks thus far. Oh, that's good. See? Oh, why does it look so white on camera? It is not that white, guys. Yeah, it's the light. Because on StreamYard, it doesn't look like that. It is nice and grungy brown. Because I figured that could go with the brown that's already on there. I wish... Hmm, let me try and ball it up. See if it does any better. No. Yes, no, no, yes. See how grungy it is now? It's all grungified brown, brown and teal. Okay. Love it. Love, love, love it. And I'll do some still photos for you guys. All right. And all we're going to do now is feed it through. That's all. There's one side. And I'm going to do the other side. Is everybody still with me? Cheryl, do you have a question? If put it in and I can ask her for you. She's yeah. not, she can't look at chat. She's busy making sure she keeps her focus. <laughs> yes. There. Oh, look at that. I got it. I've done it, guys. Look at that. And you didn't even need a needle. I didn't. Okay. Well, those holes are kind of <laughs> kind of big, which is good, <laughs> which is why I kind of chose these buttons too. Not only did they match, but they were wood and they were awesome, right? And it goes with that whole mandala type of a feel that the paper's got going on. All right. This is where your hot glue, your um, Fabri-Tac, your heavier adhesive is going to come in, guys. That's going to go through there. So what we're going to do is, oh, hang on. Did I do this right? No, I didn't do it right. Oh, silly Maddie. Stop, everybody. Hang on. <laughs> Take two. It's supposed to go the other way. 
made a mistake. I did. You're not perfect. I'm not. You see this, guys? Sometimes I have to redo things like a thousand times. And that's okay. Because again, we haven't committed to anything. So the thread needs to go towards the back of the button, guys. Uh, Beth, the, the kit is $15 and I can, we can go over what's in the kit after she finishes the project. Sure can. Be happy to. Okay. So now it's fed through the back. So your little loop is in the front, right? And the thread's coming out the back. And all you're going to do is as simple as just dropping, drop it through the hole, guys. Take both ends and drop them in. The hole sufficiently big enough that that sh part should not be a struggle. And it's going to look like that. How cute is that? Now, of course, this is flimsy. You know, that's not going to work at all. We need to glue this down. So that's where your adhesive comes in. Whatever you want to use, pick your poison. I had heated up the hot glue gun for the sake of the fact that, you know, you guys don't want to watch paint dry nor glue dry. So I'm going to put some glue. doesn't take a whole lot because it's wood and it's light. And all I need to do is pull those threads and center my button. Look at, ow, and don't burn yourself. And that's it, guys. Ta-da! How cute of a closure is that? So cute, right? Okay. It's threaded through. We now have a closure that's going to come out this way. Now that we've done that, I'm going to glue the rest of my pockets. So you guys... Press on. If you have questions, if you get stuck, if you need for me to re-explain it, I can always do that. But all I'm going to do now is decide also how I want my pockets to um, to look out. So, for example, everyone is loving it. Oh, thank you. And now you have an idea also for other closures, right? Because you could do that with any other thing. All right. My pockets facing up my pockets facing up because I'm thinking of my clutch this way. Now, when it comes here, I can either follow the same pattern. I can have it facing up this way or why not? Who says I can't have it flipped that way? So one pocket is this way. One pocket is this way. Again, preference guys up to you. All I'm going to do is glue down. So here we go. These on the back do not matter because they do not have any holes. So we don't need to line them up any other way than just eyeballing it. I am going to be, you know, controversial as always. So I'm going to go this way because I'm a rebel without a cause. Live dangerously. That's my motto. No, not really. Not at all. <laughs> Please, woman. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm the one that's always like turn signals and blah blah blah. I mean, I would helmets if I could, probably in the car, seriously. So no. That's, that's a great idea, Gwen. This is that? absolutely perfect for graduation gift cards. Yes. You can put some gift cards in here. You can put, you know, a little a notepad for them to take notes. Mm -hmm. So stinking cute. All right. So that's my inside pocket. I'm going to flip it again. Optional. Do you want a pocket? Great. Do you want a belly band instead? Fine. Whatever you'd like. I'm going with a pocket out here too to keep it uniform. Probably driving Liz crazy because she likes odd numbers. Yes. And I went with four pockets. How could I? I got to give her grief, guys. Somehow I got to. So there's that one. All right. And you guys see, I'm just basically eyeballing here, here, and then the top. And that's it. And we have contact. If you want to open it and even line it up this way, you know, you can. I just happen to look out. So there's that. It's not really luck. It's because this is the same distance from this, eyeballing it. And I know this is the same way. So because that's how I made the template, right? Okay. All good. Everybody with me? So far, so good. Okay. Look at this, guys. We're doing it live, too.
Beth, her kits are are never surprises. She always um, will share the prototype in her sales before um, selling the kits. Yes, I show you everything that's in it, everything, how it's going to work, some ideas, some prototypes. Yes, I don't like to blindside people, although I like to think that um, hopefully everyone will like them. That's not true, right? I know there's some stuff I don't necessarily like, but there's stuff that I also see potential in. Like I might see this and think, oh, you know what I would do with that? I would then maybe glue another one facing, again, see what's going on, exactly. guys, facing this way. And then it would like, be a tri trifold that stacks. I mean, see. She stole my idea, guys. So many things. I'm just giving you. She stole my idea. idea. Now she wants to make it her own. Who does? <laughs> Oh, you, me? <laughs> oh, shh. Don't be telling them my secrets. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Next. If everybody's with me, I'm going to clear all this stuff out. All that is left at this point, guys, is to do our signature, right? Our pages. What kind of papers you want to use? Go wild. Use whatever you've got. I'm going to go ahead and grab some tea dyed paper just so I can um, show you guys how I do my hidden signatures. That's it. Now, if you're going to do um, your papers, you want to write down these measurements. Four and a half by six is what I recommend. My recommendation, you do the first one. After that, take it. Take it away. Do whatever you want. So I'm going to cut my papers to those dimensions. Four and a half inches wide, six inches long. Okay? I'm going to bring my cutter. And I'm going to cut my paper. I want to do everything live with you guys. I didn't even prep and pre-cut the papers. So it's real time. Okay. Here we go. So we've got, what did I just say? I already forgot. Four and a half by six. Four yes. and a half by six. <laughs> this is like a taking notes, ma'am. <laughs> she might know me just a little bit. I forgot already. Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. I like that grunginess, though, so I don't want to cut that. So I'm going to go this way. And again, if you want to be as precise and... You know, and all that, by all means, go for it. I'm going to pretty much just eyeball what I want. Four and a half by six. By the way, if you guys are ever looking for a magnificent tool, I highly recommend this cutter. This thing. Yes, I have it and I can verify that. It's a beast. What I have not put through this poor thing. And Madison has put it through the ringer. Um, it just keeps on going, guys. Four and a half. And again, you decide how many pages you want too, right? You might want a really chunky monkey. Or you might want to leave some room for ephemera. It's up to you. But basically, just to confirm our measurements are right. Yes, they are. Okay, we know we're going to fold that in half, right? The brand is exacto. Um, but... Oh, yes. Mm -hmm right there and I'm just gauging the size it looks good now I just want to know how many I need I this thing can hold a whole lot of paper so let's cut some more luckily I brought a handful and you see how huh I didn't say anything. Oh, wow. That was weird. My computer does that nowadays. Like, there's some kind of a feedback thing. I think. Maybe it's my fan. No, it has to be my, I think it's my phone. I need to start putting it further away. There's a nice stack. I think we're good with just that. Yeah, that's good. I mean, there's plenty of room for lots more. But we're just going to go with that for now. Oh. <sighs> As a cut chipboard, it cuts really? thin chipboard, not really thick chipboard. Yeah. 
All right, and all I'm going to do is fold my pages in half. Of course, a deckled edge would have been look cool too, so I could have just torn these with a ruler, but this works too. You guys have plenty of time to catch up at this rate, right? Love me some tea dye paper. And even with all the talking and all the, um, you know, slowing down, you guys can see how quickly, I mean, how long have we been on? Uh, we've been on one minute. Huh? <laughs> what? My YouTube says one minute. I think <laughs> not. <laughs> Does it really say one minute? It doesn't, it doesn't update it. I just refreshed and it. Oh, well, we know the time. Hello. We started at six. So an hour and a half. So bad. even with all of that talking and slowing down to demo, to redo lines, to all that, it has taken us an hour and a half to basically put this thing together from scratch. I mean, no prepping, nothing, not even pre-cutting the template. Now the template is pre-cut. So now you don't even have to spend those first five minutes cutting the template. You can breeze through that. Um, so now you guys have the idea and you can do as many of these as you like and knock them out, even assembly line style, right? If you want it to. Exactly. No, Carol, they don't. Um, can I put the link for the trimmer? Uh, yeah, yeah. If you can find it, I think on Amazon probably, yeah, right? That's where I got it. I think I got mine at Staples or Office, Office Mac? No, Staples. I'm pretty sure it was Staples. All right, and so now all I'm doing is stacking my papers one inside of the other, right? Now that I pre-creased them. And you have so much paper still left, guys, to play around with in that kit. And if you're getting the fairy wings, because a lot of you have pre-ordered it, um, not fairy wings, um, what's it called? The fairy from Blue Fern. Um, that's going to be another bunch of amazing paper that you're going to get to play with. Okay, now, in the instructions that I had put on Facebook, I had mentioned that you might want to get a couple of clips. So if you've got some bull clips, get those. Okay. And what those are for is to keep these papers in line while we work with them, right? So they're not shuffling all over the place. Okay, good to go. Got it? We got our paper. It's been folded. It has been clipped. It's not going anywhere. The other thing I had mentioned to you guys in the description, which I didn't show when we first started, was the awl. So you need some kind of a pokey tool. Find your awl, find your skewer stick, find whatever you'd like. You can choose when it's very large signatures that need a lot of stabilizing. I like to do plenty of holes, maybe five or four or even three, right? This is a very small, you know, it's kind of a tiny notebook, not a lot of paper, not super heavy. You could totally get away with just two. I'm going to go ahead and do two just to keep this super simple, guys. So again, no I mean, I'm not going to measure if you like to, by all means, but I'm going to kind of come up to that point and poke through, right? That's all I did, poke through. And then I'm going to kind of look at the same distance, eyeball it, not an exact science, and poke through again. Okay, got it? I got my two holes. Now, we're going to grab our, oh, Lordy. I've gone and lost it again. <laughs> there it is. Ta -da. We're going to find our spine reinforcer, right? We know that it's going to go here. First of all, before you do anything, measure, put it in there. It should fit just right. The length should fit just right. If it does not, trim it. Just trim a little piece, okay? It's not a big deal. The same thing with the width. Close it. Is it is it buckling? Is it fighting you? If it is, mine is not. But if it is, simply, right, a little sliver or a little sliver this way. You like the sound effects? Yes. It comes with sound effects, too. 
it makes it makes <laughs> I'm like, zip, like it's, it's what I don't even know what that it is. Makes the project much more clear. Yeah, that's it. That's what it was. <laughs> I'm gonna do it just to show you um, that if it was a concern, I can just cut a little sliver. But it wasn't. It was pretty good. But there we go. All right, we know it looks good. It's all ready to go. Now, again, make sure you know which side you're working with, right? This is gonna be my outside. I know that that's gonna go in here. So I'm gonna find my needle and thread. I'm gonna cut some string, I don't know, 24 inches just about. We're not gonna go too far and too crazy. Again, this is not super heavy paper or anything that's gonna be uh, manhandled too much. We're going to come from the back. Oh, I lied, didn't I? I didn't line them up. I did. Yes, I did. All right, we're going to come from the front. I'm sorry. We're going to grab our paper. And now this is where you kind of want to line up. Hang on, let me show you first. You want to line up to make sure that you're not doing this, where there's tons on this side and nothing there, right? Because then when you glue it down, your book's going to be skewed. You're going to end up with some of the paper on the outside, right? So line it up. Kind of, if you, again, if you need to measure, by all means, go for it. I just kind of eyeball it. Oh, come on, get in frame. Oh, there. Oh, oh I was trying to focus on the table. There. Uh -huh. So I'm just kind of looking at it like so. And also, once again, looking at it also that it's, in the middle right and i'm gonna poke through so i'm gonna have to take it off to the side guys because i can't see that far i'm sorry well let me try and stand up let me see if i can do it standing up it might might happen might not it's kind of hard to do it in frame okay perfect okay you guys see that <laughs> You see how much space is left there? See how much it. space is left oh. there? Perfect on YouTube. And that it's in the middle, okay? Before you poke it, you know, and again, guys, you can always cut more of these. It's just a strip of paper. It's not a big deal. So if you mess it up, don't get all frustrated and be like, oh, my God. You know, it's okay. Cut another piece. Do it again. The, the holes in your paper are done, so they're not going anywhere, okay? Now I'm going to do the same thing again. Now that this is all lined up. Where's my string? Oh, I just pulled it all the way through, guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying so hard to stay in frame that I'm... Let me do it again. The holes are already made, so that's super simple. Pull it through. Okay. Stay. All right. Now we're going to bring this back to where it was by pulling it and tightening it here on the, in on the outside, right? I'm pulling it taut here so that it stays in place. I'm going to bring my needle. Don't get confused. I'm just using it to poke. God, this is so hard to do on camera. Hang on. Let me do it another way. It is hard on camera. Oh, let me try and do it with the pokey tool. All right. This is where the hole is, right? From the paper. You with me? All right. This is that first hole that I did. Right? Okay. I'm going to try and keep this. Oh, you know how I'm going to do this? For the sake of the other way, didn't you? Huh? Didn't you want your paper facing the other way? Well, it won't matter whichever way I want to flip it. But this way, pie shows better on camera. All right. Those two are aligned, right? Yes, yes. So I'm going to leave that all in there just for the sake of the video so I can show you what I'm doing here. Here we go. How about that? That's going to stay lined up there, it's not going anywhere. I'm going to bring my awl to the second hole, poke it through, and then by aiming for the middle, it's going to give me a perfect placement now, see, for both holes. So now this is lined up all the way through, and this is lined up all the way through. Got it? Did that make sense, Liz, what I'm saying? It does. Okay, cool. All right, we can take that out now. Now, let's go back to the 
to the needle and thread, which is so much thinner and hard to see on camera. Hopefully the awl was thick enough that you guys could see it clearly. All right, you can decide if you want your strings to hang on the, um, on the inside because some people love to hang charms off of the strings. So if you like that, you'll do this way. You'll go this way and then this way. Where's my hole? Oh, you're right, Liz. I forgot to turn the signature now. See? Sorry. I got to turn this over, guys. It's going to get a little harder to see for you guys on camera. But we do want the paper facing the right way. The holes are done. Super simple. We're going through the same holes. We're going into this hole and into that signature hole. All right. And now my strings. Come on. My strings are going to be on the inside here. I can tie off. I don't know. If, I'll bring it up in a second. Let me pull. I can tie it there, right? Because it's now going through the back like that. I can tie it off here. And then some people love to just leave a little bit of um, string. And then they can hang like a charm or something here off the string, right? If you like it that way, great. If you don't like it that way, simply reverse it. Instead of going through the back, go through the front. So let's do it through the front now. This is the hardest part probably, threading the needle. And it's got a huge hole. Oh my God. Here we go. All right. So now instead we're gonna go the opposite way. We're gonna go through the front. Wait, no, backwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to go from the back to the front. Now we're going to go into this hole and into the hidden signature, the hidden spine, and pull out. Now my strings instead are going to tie in the back like that and be just one string in the on the inside. I like that method, so I'm going to go with that. You know what I just did, Liz? What, what did you just do? Yeah. Yep. Your paper. Paper's facing the wrong way. No biggie. Take it out. I didn't take out the whole thing. I left it on the on the notebook. I'm just going to redo this part of it. Man, it's hard to see needles on camera. I'm trying, guys. I hope that I'm making sense. All I did was flip my paper. That's all. I took it out so I could reflip the paper because we had decided that we were going to go with the brown showing, right? Right. Okay. All right. There we go. So if I would have done it in the beginning, the first shot, it would have been easy. It would have taken me 10 seconds, but I wanted to make sure I showed you guys different options on how to flip um, your string. So either way, if you get it one way and you don't feel like doing it the other way, done, then just leave it. But anywho, all right. All I'm doing is tying off. Again, we don't need a whole lot, guys, because it's just, you know, a little light signature. All right. Now. That's glued on to, I'm sorry, that's threaded onto our spine. Now this is gonna become our hidden spine. So all we need to do is add glue. If anybody has questions, let me know. No questions yet. And if by the way- part everyone's watching. And by the way, the glue is also gonna help to, with that string, right? It's gonna keep it also in place. And all I'm doing is grabbing my my signature and placing it right where it belongs. It's already pre-measured, it's already pre-everything. All I have to do is pretty much tack it down. Make sure it's aligned. We know everything's gonna fit like a glove because everything has been pre-measured and pre-done and pre-cut. And it will all line beautifully. And voila. making sure that it's pressed down on both sides and now we have huh 
didn't say anything. Oh my God, it keeps doing it. I wish you were on my end. It's so weird. When I go to talk, it actually like, I can hear it back. So here it is. No strings on the outside. It is perfectly adhered on the inside. It is hidden. You do have this gorgeous paper now here, right? Decorating it. There it is. And now all that we need to do, watch me stab myself later. Do the right thing, Maddie. There. All we need to do is thread this through the front. And ladies and gentlemen, our journal, our clutch is done. And you decide, do you want to hang off some charms? Do you want it to close this way and this way? And then tie up here? Or do you want it to tie off instead this way? You have enough string either way, so the measurements were right. And there you have it. We have a clutch with a hidden signature. Voila. All right, guys. All right, ask me questions. Shoot. It is as simple as that. We are done. Love it, Maddie. Perfect, Maddie. Oh, thank you. Oh, let me open up comments now. Now I should be able to see comments. If I maximize this and minimize that. There we go. And hello to everyone else that came in, guys. Sorry. I was trying to focus on not not um not getting distracted because you guys know I like to chat. So <laughs> but it is as simple as that. Now, um, if anybody has questions, I will be happy to go ahead and answer it for you guys. If nobody has questions, um, I'll just let you know that the video will be um, coming. I was just waiting to to do this tutorial so I can actually finish out the uh, the other video. Um, I'll show you the samples again. Like Carol mentioned, if you want to stitch your pockets, go for it. If you want to add charms you know, to the bottom of them. So then when they close, they look totally adorbs. You can, right? Um, if you want to hang something from your spine, you can. I mean, possibilities are endless. If you want to put a little tuck here on the flap, you can. If you want to insert a prong instead, you know, and add a paper pad that's removable, you can. If you want to, instead of doing the button closure, if you want to just use um, maybe your seam binding and tuck it underneath the pocket, no special tools are required. Madison actually mentioned to me, mom, couldn't that be a pencil holder? You almost could feed a pencil through there. Look at that. So it would serve two purposes, right? Just give yourself enough room to do so. But look, you could use it as a pencil loop. So I thought that was fascinating. Um, collections, any paper collection, guys, so long as it's thick. You need some heavy paper. Um, this one is the accordion. Oh, if you want to do the accordion, by the way, um, I'm pretty sure everybody knows how to do an accordion uh, fold. But all you're going to need, let me get you the measurements because I did write them down somewhere in case somebody was going to ask. Hold up. I got them in my notes. I know I do. I know I do. Okay, so for an accordion, you're going to need two pieces that are going to measure about two and three quarters high. Okay, so this way. And all I did was I used brown cardstock. I didn't even use anything from the paper collection to do this. So you need, yeah, two and three quarters tall. And then depending on how many valleys, peaks and valleys you want, or how many pockets you want, that's what's going to determine the... Um, you know, the length of the paper. For this one, I used eight inches, okay? And that gave me one, two, three, four, five, six pretty nice size pockets where you could tuck in all your... And by the way, the kit does come with um, the journal cards and all that, right? So you can even stuff, stick those in there, right, and store them. Um, I need to remind you about the new idea. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so here's something super cool. 
All right, so you have your template, right? All right. In your kit, it came with this template that looked like, let me see, did I save one? Did I save one? Did I save one? See that I did. Yes, I did. That looked like that, right? Here's something super cool that I thought of after as a bonus. Not only can you make all these, you can make the magnetic boxes, right, with it, where you could stack them, right? Not only can you do all these other projects, plus anything else that you can think of, you can make them in different sizes, guys. Do you know that all you have to do is take this to your copier and shrink it or blow it up? And you can make these, I mean, you could end up with like what the one we made today. You can end up with one this big if you want to. You can end up with one that big if you wanted to. It's just depending on how big or how small you want to blow this up. So hang on, I'll give me a copy and show you. I'm actually gonna walk over to my copier right now. And make you a copy. All right, I'm going to shrink it by, hmm, let me think. Let's do, let's do, I don't know, 70%. No, let's go 80% and see what we get. Of course, I just printed it on printer paper, so I would obviously print it on cardstock to make a template. But look at how cute that is. Look at the pockets. The pockets would be like this big, and that's a 70%. So I would end up with a clutch. I mean, this is just adorable. So you see, if you want bigger boxes or bigger clutches, make them bigger. If you want smaller ones for just like ephemera or whatever, make them smaller. You can decide what size you want just by simply changing the size of the template. How cute is that? And of course, um, for everybody who has the uh, the kit, right? Um, you can definitely make copies for yourself, but please remember not to share, right? Um, and you can make projects to sell, but you cannot sell the template, right? So please, I mean, I think everybody knows that, but please always keep that in mind. I'll make that disclosure here and now just in case. But imagine if this was, you know, a 70% reduction and we made a clutch this thinking cute. I mean, I'm just holding it, not even on the line, but. Peggy says, perfect Christmas gift for the girls at work. Yeah. So Cheryl says, you are a great instructor, Maddie. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope it was fun enough for everybody to follow along and easy enough. Uh, but again, if not, you can always come back, replay the video, and there'll be the bonus video where you can come back over and over again, even a year from now. You know, you'll find the template and go, oh, my God, I forgot about that thing. Well, you can come back. Look how cute that one is. 70% size. <laughs> Imagine if I even went smaller. This is actually almost business card size, right? Look at that. What a cool way to store business cards or ATCs or whatever, right? Two cute okay all right guys if you have no more questions for me or um if there are no questions or if anybody wants to see something ask away but we'll open it up for um can you show the kit really quick for beth oh sure well i kind of dismantled um, carla um she's going to show the kit you can get the template by getting the kit and the cost is $15. And if you want to just let me know, I'm making a list here for her. So far, I have Barbara and Carol that want. You're yeah. welcome, Carla. Got it. All right, let me move all the stuff out of the way so I don't confuse you with what does come with the kit. Also, um, Vanessa is asking if you can put make this a, a PDF so that they can resize it on the computer. Mm -hmm. You know what? 
Possibly. Let me think about that, Vanessa, because I have been thinking about doing some digital stuff. Um, the bird, by the way, the bird cards for the other kit. Um, I don't want to confuse anyone, so I don't want to really talk about it. But for the bird cards, they're going to be coming this week um, for the other kit that we're going to be doing next. Okay. So this is the way the kit comes. Oh, let me move all that stuff to the side. All that stuff. I got you, Car Carla. The first thing you're going to get, of course, is going to be your template, right? Which you just saw and you saw me work with. Um, the second thing you're going to see in your kit is going to be the Blue Fern collection, a partial collection of Paisley and Vine. And it's going to include one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sheets. So let me show them to you, front and back. This one, kind of cool, it's like scratch canvas. This one, oops, sorry, that glare. Oh, this one, like I mentioned, it comes with journaling cards and other ephemera. That one, if you like that side, you could use that too. This one. Not pretty. Oh. The birdie one with the mandalas. I love that one. The chicken wire. If you want to call it that. I might be more Moroccan tile. I'm not sure. And then the brown one, which I absolutely love. And if that's not gorgeous enough, it has um, cursive on the back. So you get all of those sheets. Again, super thick paper because that's what you're going to need. And then you're going to get this bag of goodies, which is going to include seam binding in two different colors. Oh, Lordy, if I remember how many inches. Plenty. How's that? Plenty to do <laughs> probably a good three or four journals uh, of seam binding and matching colors for the line. You're going to get two, and they, they are varied, so it's an assortment, but two different mandala wooden buttons. And then you're going to get four of the eyelet plus the back, you know, the rings to it as well, in case you want to use those. All right. And that's what comes in the kit, my dear friends. So you get the paper line and all that stuff with it too. So you have enough to do quite a few of them. Um, it takes a 12 by 12 to do um, basically one of the clutches. So you could potentially make eight different clutches out of just this paper. Okay. DSP. What is DSP, um, Yvonne? Is there a name of the DSP? Oh. You put me on the kit list. Yes, Beth. What is um, DSP? Do you know what that is? No. I don't know what that is, Yvonne. Um, Cheryl does have a question. It's not about this kit, but she wants to know, can we still get the bird kit? Yes. Let me show you. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to confuse everybody. So we're all good with this, right guys? Any more questions on this one before I show you the other one? Yeah, that was for um, Beth because she was pretty new to your group here. Blue fern. Designer series paper. Is there a name of the designer? This one, yes, this is Blue Fern, Paisley, and Vine. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> there, in case you want to do a screen capture. Okay. All right, let me put this off to the side. Um, and again, thank you everyone who crafted along and all the those who are going to come later and watch the video and, you know, speed through it. Feel free to do that. You don't have to hear all my talking. Yes, uh, that's what I was going to ask you for Cindy because she was asking about whether the tutorial, this video will be up for them, correct? Yeah, this video will stay up forever. There's going to be another bon bonus video, which is going to be the condensed version uh, without me talking, really, just like the intro and maybe um, an exit uh, little statement. But the rest of it is all sped through. And it's broken down into steps, like step one, step two. So, and it's got also um, hints. So I've, yeah, I've done, 
I've done some good stuff, I hope, um, for you guys. Um, so there's going to be two videos for just this tutorial. This one and then a sped through one. Okay? Like an actual official tutorial with music and all that. And I know um, there was somebody that said they wanted to interact, but this was the best way for us, we thought, to do it so that there's no interruptions for Maddie and it'd be easier for you guys to follow along. Plus, I didn't have to limit it, guys. Um, exactly. One of the sad things that happened um, with the last couple of classes that I did, people were kind of like, oh, I didn't get in. And, you know, I had to limit it to 10 people uh, because that is, you know, just what um, the studio allows. Plus, I thought it was more manageable. But um, this way, I figured not only can everyone participate and come in and um, craft along, Plus, I also figured that even if you didn't get the kit and you wanted to just hang out or see what we're doing or try and reinvent it, I mean, up to you. I, I would appreciate, of course, always the credit um, if you copy it or if you decide to do something similar to just, you know, shout out kind of thing. But, um, yeah, I figured this way we can all, you know, we can open it to everybody. <laughs> And it's great for somebody that's on the fence about buying the kit because they're not sure if they're going to like it or if it's too hard for them. It's a perfect opportunity for you to see how easy it can be done. Yes, the magic, guys, is in the template. It really is because um, with the template, you're able to do, you know, do it over and over again. And, and you don't have to measure. You don't have to, you know, none of that. It's all being taken out of the equation. Let me see if I have, because I was working with it, so I pulled it all apart. Of course I did. Um, a sample of the, of the next kit that's coming out. Oh, the bird kit, yes. Oh, I think oh, I have I names for you too. I think I have a couple of samples in here. Carla says, uh, Maddie, that is unbelievably kind, freely giving of you. Yes. Aw, thank you. Yes. Maddie, you are a woman on fire, says Beth. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like I'm on fire. I'm like going a thousand miles a minute. Susan says, thank you so much, Maddie. You are so welcome. It is absolutely appreciative and it makes it so much easier to, to want to share. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the kit's going to include um, the template. A it's got a couple of pieces, guys. I'm sorry because I pulled it all apart. I've been working with it. So, I mean, it's going to come like the other one in a nice, you know, bag. And it's going to have um, all of your pieces um, not cut, obviously. It's going to be the template itself. Um, so that's kind of like the bones of it. But in essence, what it does is it does this... Um, window see-through window um flip and we're going to be using to make this these really gorgeous cards you're going to get photocopies of the cards um and some of you are getting the digitals of them um these are from 18 what was it 18 i don't remember the year late 1800s okay um cards, original cards that I actually was able to score, but I went ahead and did photocopies for you guys. So as you can see, I mean, they're delicious. Everything we like, right? The crackling, the, the distressing the I mean, but this is the real deal. I didn't, I didn't distress them this way. They really are falling apart because they're well over a hundred year old cards. And some of them even have the yummy tape on them. Look at that, the yellowing tape. Um, and I wish I had the box to show you because the box was even um, sewn. Um, it was so cool. I have to find the box again. I'm sure I put it away for safekeeping. But for this kit, you're going to get those um, images, the digital um, images for those cards. And then you're going to get the template to create this right here, um, which is like I said, a see-through window. See, it's peekaboo. Um, flip tag where you can actually journal here if you like or put a picture or you could put add paper to it if you like. Um, you could stick this into a pocket or you could actually um, obviously glue it down and then just have it flip up. 
and then create another pocket here by just gluing it down on three sides you would create another pocket this way right um and then i made another sample these are just two samples that i kind of made to show you what they would look like again you've got the peekaboo peek through window and in this case i used the back of one of the cards so that it's actually double-sided uh, and again, you've got this really cool place to either put some paper, like a paper pad if you'd like, or you could uh, just journal directly onto it. So the template, again, is going to let you make unlimited amount of these because once you've got the template, it's the same thing, right? You can go to town and make them in all kinds of collections. You don't have to use the bird cards. You could use flowers. You could use butterflies. You could use anything that's just going to look kind of cool, like almost like the specimen um, you know, card type of a feel, right? Because it's got that peekaboo kind of window. So that's what we're going to be doing. Maddie, that's only, like, I just love her. Oh, thanks, guys. Um, and if your next question is going to be, how much was this kit? I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, does anybody remember? Um, Liz, do you remember? Oh, Liz is muted. <laughs> Sorry, I was <laughs> muted because my husband's phone was ringing. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, I can see your hands moving, but <laughs> I was like, yeah, and I was talking. I can see your hands. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I can't hear I was you. talking to myself as usual. The um, the kit. I remember you saying it was ten dollars. There you go, Patricia. Just verified it. It's ten. Thank and, you, Patricia. Yeah. So, so this you want one me is to take names for this kit. Yeah, yeah, sure. If anybody wants it. Okay. So uh, anybody that wants uh, a bird kit, let me know. I got you, Peggy. 6000 well worth it. <laughs> Roy. <laughs> I love you, Roy. You're such a hoot. A photo, Carla. Yes. Wouldn't that be cool with some of those vintage photos? Or even like the Tim Holtz paper people? That'd be cool. Or fairy. So it looks like she's trapped behind the window. See, that would be cool. See, you guys are amazing artists. Again, I give you the jumping point and then you guys jump in, right? You just go for it. After I've we've done it one time, just like all of these, you are going to go berserk making them in all paper lines, shapes, sizes, additions. You're going to add all kinds of stuff in here, whatever. You know, you guys, you um, guys. I think you got this kit, Zena. It's the clutch kit. Hey, Zena. I'm going to be here that you can watch it again and make a kit with her. Yes. And we the yeah. Zumba class. And, oh, lucky her. I love Zumba. Oh, God. Um, The video for this also should be released probably, if not this week, definitely beginning of next week. Okay, guys? So, so you'll have plenty. But in the meantime, you'll have this live to play back. Okay. I have people that want this kit and my pen is dying. I don't know why. It's a brand it's new pen. Quit on you. It says I'm done. <laughs> Before forget it. I'm done. Oh, this was so much fun, guys. I really it was. I, I love it this way. Yeah, you like it? It was fun, right? Because you don't get um interrupted. I, I can ask you the questions that they need to answer immediately and write down. Me writing it down is much easier, and then I can remember to give you the info. Yes. Hey, Kim. Thank you. Sorry, guys, I missed so it, many of you. It, um, for the it it does include the fold the the template for the. Oh my goodness, I'm lost for words. It for the, includes the flip, right? Yes. Yes, yeah. this kit includes, it's going to include, again, I wish I had like an actual template to show you, but I pulled mine apart. It's going to include all of these pieces right here, guys. Yeah. Oh, there you go. See? Exactly. And, and, put it all together and the digital for these pictures. Okay. Exactly. So this will get emailed to you. This portion, the one with the photos is going to get emailed to you. This portion, I can probably either email it. Mm, I think this was the one that was too long. No, this one has got to be a hard copy because this was too big. 
right. if I'm not mistaken, for a nine and a half by 11. Yes. Yeah, you did measure it the other yeah. day. And that's what yeah. the problem was. It's too big for a, a piece of paper. Now, um, once you get it, you can shrink it and make some, you know, you can make them this little, guys. But, um, but yes, this has got to be hard copy. I have to actually send you the physical kit for this. But these will be digitally sent. Okay. Yeah, you can order it tonight if you'd like this one. You can order either one of them tonight. Yes. So you just let us know. Yeah. If you want to do the clutch, order the clutch. If you want to use, you do the um, see-through um, flip. I have it down for the um, for this kit for the bird kit, um, Kim. Is that what you want, or did you want both kits? Sorry, guys. Let me make sure I have everybody. I don't want to get it. <laughs> <laughs> you too much. What did he say? I got it. Okay. 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 Kim S. This one is 15. Vanessa. And this one is 10. Barbara. And Carla V. You guys are amazing. I was kind of a little bit nervous because, you know, it's a first time go around, but you guys were so easy. Yeah. That was okay, awesome. Kim. I got you down for the bird flip. Got you. No problem. All righty, my loves. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Liz. Couldn't have done it without you. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, can I, I have just one question? Sure. The bird kit, um, Carla's printer does not work. She mm -hmm. wants to know if the birds could be mailed to her. So, you know, the, a copy of them. She um, You know what? I can try, Carla. How's that? Because I'm almost out of yellow and I ordered it, but I don't know when it's going to come in. I think later on next week. So I can definitely try. Okay. How's that? How about Liz takes a note? And if I can't do it, I will message you. How's that? But if I can, then absolutely. I'll get it ready for you. You're welcome, ladies. All right. I think I have everyone. All right. If anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out. You guys know my email is always down below in the description box. It's also right there on screen, so you can't miss it, right? And then... Um, also, you have me on Facebook, right? So if I have you on Facebook, that's usually a faster way for me to respond. But any questions about any of this or questions about how to put it together or anything at all, just feel free to holler, okay? Love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Had a blast. We will see Good night, you my beautiful friends. We'll see you on Thursday. Don't forget. Yes, Thursday on Maddie's channel. She's hosting for me. Thursday back here. At six o'clock, we are going to do pocket tags for the swap in Liz's group. So make sure you guys come to that. Make sure you guys sign up. Did you pop in the link? Um, no. I think everybody here is in my group. Okay. We'll do it on Thursday. It's okay. You're always promoting my group, and I appreciate it. Oh, anytime. Promoting everybody. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. But make sure you guys sign up. So if you are in her group, there's no reason why you're not signing up because it's going to be fun. All right. Um, I see so you, Cindy. Oh, bird kid. Okay. You got it. All right. Love you guys. See you on Thursday. Bye. Night. Mwah.